Elle va jouer à paix, décollage. Décollage, lift off from a tropical rainforest to the edge of time itself. James Webb begins a voyage back to the birth of the universe. Punching a hole through the clouds, 20 seconds into the flight. NASA's mission to journey beyond the stars is officially underway. The space agency got exactly what it wanted for Christmas with the successful launch of the James Webb Space Telescope. Folded inside the nose cone of a European Ariane 5 rocket, the $10 billion space observatory lifted off from its launch site in Kourou. French Guyana, early Christmas morning. The historic feat is more than two decades in the making. The James Webb Space Telescope is NASA's largest and most expensive scientific probe ever sent into space. Now, once Webb is fully operational, it's going to replace the 31-year-old Hubble Space Telescope as the premier space observatory. Scientists hope it'll teach us new information about our universe and its origins. How exciting is that? Joining us now for more is CBS News senior space analyst Bill Harwood. Bill, thank you so much for joining us. A big day, lots of questions. How significant of a feat is the successful launch of the James Webb Space Telescope? And what are the next steps before this thing is fully up and running? Well, the launch was a huge step. You know, as you said, the James Webb Space Telescope is the most expensive the most complicated and one of the most scientifically ambitious spacecraft ever built. Uh, no question about that. And getting a successful launch behind it is a major step forward. Uh, but also, as you implied, it's just the first step. And in, some, and in some sense, the really hard part now begins. You know, to fit it inside that Ariane 5 nose cone, they had to fold up the mirror itself and a large sunshade. This is a, a giant parasol, if you will, that'll shield the telescope from the heat and the light of the sun. They got to do that to get the thing cold enough to register this faint light left over from the birth of the universe. Uh, that's all got to unfold properly over the next two weeks. It's going to be very challenging. There's no room for error. Everything has to work or this telescope won't be able to do what it was designed to do. But it's off to an awfully good start. It was a picture perfect launch and, uh, it, and they put it right on the exact trajectory they were planning. So very good start to this mission. Kudos. So this mission is 20 years in the making. Where will this telescope be headed once it's fully operational? Well, again, you know, the goal is to look at infrared light from the very first stars and galaxies to form in the fires of the Big Bang. Now, you might think, why is that so difficult? Well, space itself has been stretched out over the past 14 billion years. So the light that was first emerging from those stars might have been high energy ultraviolet radiation, visible light. That's all been stretched out by the expansion of space. And those, that light now is in the infrared part of the spectrum. You can't see that really from Earth. And so they had to build a special telescope that's capable of seeing it. And to do that, they've got to cool it down to something like 50 degrees above absolute zero. This is unimaginably cold, so they can see this faint heat left over from the Big Bang. That requires that big sunshade I was talking about. All that's got to work to make this happen. It's, it just boggles my mind. It is just so cool. So how big of an upgrade is this telescope from the Hubble Space Telescope? How does it work? Well, you know, it's a little bit apples and oranges. You know, Hubble was designed to look at ultraviolet, visible light, and just a little bit of infrared, and it did that remarkably well. Webb's designed to look into the infrared far deeper than Hubble can see. For example, Hubble was used to look back in time almost to within 500 million years or so of the Big Bang with these really long time exposures that could capture that light. But because of the wavelengths involved in that stretching of space I was talking about, Hubble can't see any deeper than that. That's the limit. Webb, however, can go past that. They expect to see light from uh, galaxies that, that had been formed maybe within 100, 200 million years of the Big Bang. That's an eye blink when you think about the cosmic history of the universe. Uh, so it's going to be a revolutionary upgrade over Hubble in that it'll allow the astronomers to see things they simply can't see with Hubble. So they're a little bit complementary, a little bit apples and oranges, but working together uh, it's going to give a much more complete view of the universe than you'd have with either telescope working alone. Got it. Scientists are hopeful that this top-of-the-line space observatory will be able to give us new information 
about the birth of our universe, dating all the way back to the Big Bang. I mean, this sounds like it's out of a movie, but it's not. How is this possible? You know, it, it, it really does sound like it's out of a movie. You know, and when you think about the theories of how the universe formed, uh, they know there was the Big Bang, that's obvious. Uh, they, they can record some of the radiation from that initial explosion, some of that heat's still around today. But how the first stars and galaxies evolved out of that uh, is a mystery. And so the James Webb Space Telescope, because it's optimized to capture this infrared light, they're hoping to actually see the very first generation of galaxies to coalesce out of the Big Bang. Uh, you know, by spectroscopically studying that light, they're going to be able to tell what elements were present, what was cooked up in some of these stars before they exploded, uh, how it all came about. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's like, that's crazy when you think about it. It's going to be a lot of fun to see what they can learn out of this. I know, I know. I'm just on the edge of my seat here. And, you know, this thing is going to be positioned millions of miles away from Earth. So how long will it take yeah. to transmit images from space once it's up and running? Well, you know, it's not really the transmission time that makes a difference here. I mean, it's going to be about a million miles from Earth, but light's pretty quick. You know, it moves at 186,000 miles per second. Uh, so they'll get the signals back pretty quickly. The, the thing is, though, they've really got to get the telescope fully deployed, and then it's going to take months, literally months, to get it to cool all the way down to 50 degrees or so above absolute zero. They've got to calibrate the instruments on board. They've got to check all that out. So it's going to be about six months before we see the first science images. So we've got a little bit of a wait in front of us, but uh, the scientists are hoping that it'll all be worth it in the end. I'm sure it will. It's fascinating. Bill Harwood, thank you so much. Sure thing.